Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to another PandaS tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to perform a wrench lookup using the PandaS library in Python. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you two different approaches. The first method is using the numpy dot function, and the second method is to create kind of like a, a wrench index object. You can use the index object to look at a value within a wrench and extract the corresponding value from a different column. So I have an Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to just give you an example visually so you understand how the example works. So we're going to have two different data frame objects. And one is to contain the route data, so which is going to be this table right here. And with the route data table, we have three columns. The dates column, the value column, and in column D is going to be the it's going to be the expect value. And the expect value is coming from the lookout table, which is going to be a different, a separate uh, data frame object. And with this lookout table, we have three columns. So the start column, stop column, which is indicating the range. And the color value is basically the value that we're trying to uh, extract that based on the value in column C from the route data table. So if I have a value of three, and because value three fell under uh, uh, index uh, 0, which is this one right here. And we're going to extract the value red. And for value 7, because 7 fell between 6 and 10, so we want to uh, extract orange as our expect value, and so forth. Now let's go back to our Python editor. And here I uh, pre wrote the, the Python statement to give me the data frame objects. So let me just run the Python script. Okay, so we have two data frames. Uh, the first data frame object is called df underscore route data. And the second data frame object is df underscore lookup table. So based on the name, we know the first data frame is going to be our route data, which is corresponding to this table right here. And the second table is going to be our lookup table, which is going to be this table right here. So if I simply just print the data frame real quick and this is our, uh, our table right here so just the dates column and the value column and if I print the second data frame object and this is our, our, our lookup table now let me pull out the, the numpy dot, dot documentation so let me actually let me make that a little bigger. So if we look at the numpy dot dots uh, documentation, the definition is dots part of two arrays. And to be honest, the the explanation is not very useful in this case. But if we go down to the parameters, so we have three parameters, uh, parameter A and parameter B. So A is going to be your main range, and the B uh, parameter is going to be your mixed range. And the out uh, parameter, uh, which is the output argument, so this is going to be the so it's going to be the array name that you want to populate the result. So we'll see in a second. And lastly, uh, the return data type is going to be an ND array, so it's just be basically just one dimensional array. And that's basically all you need to know. Now let's go back. So here I'm going to store my result to an object called result. I'm going to uh, use the numpy dot dot function. Next, we want to specify our condition. So, sync the condition kind of like an if statement. We're going to insert two conditions to specify the the minimum range and the maximum range. So here, I'm going to grab the the value from the route data uh, data frame object. And here I'm, I'm going to call the value uh, method. And I'm going to extract all the value from the, the value the from the value column from of the route data object. So for the rows, I want to extract all the rows. And for the column, so I'm going to leave that as none. And if I simply just 
uh, execute the highlighted uh, Python script or Python statement. Oops, uh, there's no. Oh, should be values, not value. So if I let me, let me clear my terminal. So if I simply just run the highlight uh, statement, and here is going to create a one dimensional array. Inside the list object is going to put every single value into a uh, their own individual list uh, object. And next, we need to install condition. So I'm going to say that if the value is greater or equals to the start value from the lookup table, so it will be df lookup table. And so this is going to be our uh, lower bound, so basically. And this will be our upper bound. And want to join the conditions using the ampersand symbol. And here, actually, let me just copy this uh, statement right here. I'm going to change the the condition to greater or equals to, and this is going to be stop. Now for the out parameter. Want to provide from which column of the lookup table we want to extract the value, and we don't want to extract the value from the color column of the lookup table. And I'm going to provide a color name, which is color, and that's it. And I'm going to print the result object. Now, if I highlight these two statements. And execute. Oops, uh, result is not defined. So this should be values plural, and that's my mistake. So let me try again. So if I highlight these two statements and run it, and here this is going to be our result. The result is going to store in a list object. Now we have the results. So we can take the result object. And append it to the route data data frame. So let's call this uh let's call this column color. I'm just going to provide the result object as the values. And if I just uh, execute line 19. And this time if I print the df route data data frame. And here we have our color column. So if we just do a comparison check against our Excel file. So red, orange, green, and blue. And the last uh, record is going to be empty because 22 does not fall under any of the, the range of the lookup table. So that's method number one. Now let's go to method number two. For the second method, we're going to perform a range lookup by creating an interval index class instance. So here, let me pull the documentation of the function that we'll be using. So we'll be using this uh, method or function called pandas dot interval index uh, function. So I'm going to use function uh, for the terminology. If we look at the definition, immutable index of intervals that are close on the same side, and what that means is. So using the interval index uh, method or function, generally you can have an index that can be dates, uh, just a regular numbers, one, two, three, four, five, or you can have a range of values. And so that's what the uh, interval index function is for, to serve as a special index object that you can have uh, multiple values uh, stored in an index. The interval index function has six parameters, and basically all of them are optional. Uh, you can create interval index uh, instance while providing any uh, values to any of the parameters. But if we look at the parameters, uh, so it's going to so we have data, which is going to be one dimensional data object. So it can be an ND array, list object, tuple, and anything that's one D array. And we can specify whether or not it's closed. So that means, uh, do you want the interval to close on the left, on the left side, right side, or on both ends, or neither? And this one is data type. 
and copy. So copy just means that do you want to uh, make a copy of the object? So instead of using the original uh, object. So you can uh, look at the documentation on your own and I'll provide the link in the description below. Now I want to go down towards the bottom. So this is what I want to focus on. And so here we have the attributes and methods. So since um, the interval index function is a really powerful uh, function to use, so I'll be covering in more detail in a separate video. But for now, let's look at the function that we'll be using uh, to create the, to do the uh, range lookup. So the function I'll be using is, oops, is this function right here, farm to post uh, method. And here's the, the basically the, the parameters. So you accept data and the close name, copy and D type. So everything inside the list is optional. And if we read the description, construct an interval index from an array like two posts. So that's basically all you need to know. Now let's go back to our Python editor. And here again, so I already created the data frames. And let me just run this by on its own. So that way that I can have something to work with. The first step is we need to uh, create our valued objects from the from our lookout table. So here, my lookout object or lookout data frame is the DF gray lookout uh, data frame. So if I just grab the, the data frame object, And I'm going to extract the main value and the max value. So here I'm going to extract all the rows. And for the column, so it's going to be from the main column to the max column. And that apply. So I want to apply a tuple uh, class. And it's going to be one. So the first, uh, the first array. And I'm going to convert the output to a list. And like that. So if I just run the highlight uh, statements, and here's, uh, so it looks like I have a typo. Let me take a look. Oh, so this, uh, so it should be, okay, should be like that. So this should be a string. So let me try again. So if I just run uh, line 16, and this time, I think it work. Uh, so it work this time. If I just print the value uh, object, and so here, this is what I was talking about. So from the from to post method, and we construct an interval index. So then from a tuple object. So this is gonna be our index uh, item. So this one will be index number one, index number two, index number three, and so on. Oh, by the way, so I forgot to mention. So when you are creating your uh, lookup table, uh, always start from the upper bound uh, and work your way down to the lower bound. So here I start from the highest range uh, to the lowest range. Now we have the value. So here I'm, we can go ahead and create our index object. And I'm just going to just uh, name the object index, INDX. I'm going to grab the interval index method that from two posts. And our first parameter is the data parameter. So our data is going to be value object. And for close, it's going to be both. And that's it. So if I just run line 17, if I print index, and this is going to be our interval index uh, object. So this is what the, the object looks like. And to grab the corresponding value, so we want to insert a new uh, column to the DF student's DF frame. And we have two columns. So student column, which is the name, over score, and which is just a random score that uh, I use the random function to generate a uh, random score between 49 and, and 100. So let's, ins so let's uh, insert a new column called uh, gray. 
and from the lookup data frame object, which is the DF grade lookup. And we're going to uh, use the look function to basically insert in the values. And our value is going to be from the index uh, object. And we're going to use the get indexer and providing the score that I want to perform the lookup. So we want to provide the overall score uh, value. So here from the DF students, I'm going to uh, reference the overall score column. I'm going to grab the column where I want to uh, extract the corresponding value, which is going to be the gray column. Actually, let me change the, the column name. So this let me just do students gray. So that way that uh, it won't be as confusing because I just noticed that the, the column name is the same. And we need to convert the result to values. And that's it. Now if I just run line 19, and if I just print the DF students diaphragm object. And so this is what we have. So for Joe, because he got a score of 56, so he got a letter grade F. And for Jane, because she got 76, and that gives it of the letter grade of C. And for Mary, she got 96, so she got an A in her, I guess, in her class. All right, guys, so this is everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found the video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.